Thank you so much for being part of this session. We are on page two. This is Masterclass Day 4. Every human being or every person has a favorite restaurant. And what do you love about your restaurant or your favorite restaurant? The chance that you like food the way they serve. You like their service. You like their specials. And why did you stop going to some of the restaurants? You stopped going there because the restaurant have got poor service. Maybe their, their product, their food is no longer nice. Maybe it's too expensive. People can't find the restaurant. So you stop going there. Maybe it's got a negative association. So people visit your church based on what they receive. Based on what they get. It, you know, I know we, we think all churches offer Christ. All churches offer worship. But the truth is that people come there for a specific thing. You go to McDonald's because you want the McFeast or you want McFlurry. You go to um, Spare because you want Spare Ribs. So you're not going to go to McDonald's and look for Spare Ribs. You're not going to go to uh, Spare and look for a Big Mac. People attend your church because of what they receive. A music team is the one that attracts people to church. I started singing at church. I started committing at church because of the choir. I even became a recording artist because our church choir was good. In 2000, I joined a choir at church. Poor music and a poor sound can turn off the visitors, can turn off the people who want to join the church. Music team, we spend more time on stage. We are like pastors. A pastor can preach for 45 minutes. The music team can sing for 45 minutes. We don't see intercessors. So the music team is a big deal. Visitors get to see ushers a little bit when they're coming in, but they sit down and listen to the music team. That's how important you are, guys. You are very important at your church. You are taking 50% of the time. You sing for offering. You take a lot of time on stage. If the music team or the sound is bad at church, the pastor is going to have a difficult time to minister, especially to new people. They're not going to like it. They're not going to enjoy it. So a music team must have a, must have a great ministry. The role of the music team is important. That's why we got a praise and worship masterclass. I've been singing for 14 years as a praise and worship team and, and as, a, as a choir leader. And I learned that we need to help each other in order to improve. So welcome to day four of our masterclass. Why? Do we need music ministry at church? Cool. So I'm going to just give you five things. There are many, but there are five important things or reasons why we need music ministry. Number one, to thank God. Hallelujah. As we sing, people come and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Your music allows people to thank God. When you go to Masterclass Day 1, I give you the types of songs. So please go and listen to that so that you can know types of songs. The children of Israel, they sang a song in Exodus 15 verse 1 after they crossed the Red Sea. Moses sang and the children joined him. And they were saying, uh, they sang unto the Lord for he had triumphed gloriously. So the Lord had victory over the enemies which are the Egyptians and their horse and their riders had been thrown under the sea. So they sang. So people come to church to say, thank you for a wonderful week, Lord. Thank you for a new job. Thank you. I'm cured from uh, sickness that I had. Thank you, my child passed at school. A music team offered the, the people the opportunity to thank God. Number two, why do we need a music team? To stir up the anointing. Stay up the anointing. Samuel was a prophet. So he said, look, I need a musician. In 2 Kings 3 verse 15. Bring me a, a, a minstrel, which means a musician. And it came to pass when a musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon the prophet. So we need music so that our preachers can be prophetic, can, be, can teach with revelation. Amen. But see, we need a music team. To bring the glory of God. The temple was filled in 2 Chronicles 5, 13. You know why? Because of singers. You see how powerful you are, guys. It came to pass that when musicians and singers were in one accord, 
making one sound, praising the Lord. And they lifted their voice and the sound and the trumpet and the musicians praising the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. That their house was filled with the glory. How many of you want the glory at your church? You need to be united. Stop fighting each other. Stop being divided. You need to be united. So the purpose of a music team is to bring the anointing. Number four, why do we need a music ministry? For healing and deliverance. Healing power comes from the blood. When you sing, people are healed. David played with harp, and then we know King Saul was healed. First Samuel 16, 16. And number five, why do you sing? So that they can be a joy of the Lord and happiness. James 5, verse 13. Is anyone afflicted? Which means, is anyone sick? Let us pray. Is anyone happy, merry? Let them sing a song, a psalm. So a worship team is there to help people to sing. Now I'm on page four. The image. So we are talking about the image of the music team. Then when I say image, I'm not talking about the looks only. I'm talking about your character. And I'm talking about how people perceive a music team. Today, that's where I want to focus on. How do people receive you at, at, at church on Sunday? How is your character? How is the perception? What do they think about the music team at your church? If there's one person who's, who's maybe like a drunkard, like a person who's a womanizer, or a person who's a woman who stays with a man before marriage, that the brand, it smears everyone. But oh, that church where they drink. Oh, that church where they sleep around. Oh, that church. So the image of the music team, it matters. It matters. How people perceive you, it matters. Jesus could not perform miracles in his hometown because of perception. They say we know him. If people know that you are a drunkard, no matter, even if the anointing, even if the cloud is at church, that one, that one is a drunkard. So we don't receive from her. We don't receive from him. Image matters. So today we're talking about image. Image is your appearance. Remember, image it might not be you. You might be a very nice, quiet person, but you appear as if we are papa. Pa. You appear as if you like things. You appear as if you are a womanizer or you appear like as a girl. You appear as if you are on sale. Like every man can get you. You look cheap. It's dangerous to when you appear as if you have nothing great to offer. So your image is your appearance. Your image is your attitude. Can you greet people? Remember, you don't know the people who, are, who come to your church. But they know you because they see you there on stage. Your lifestyle is your image. A music team's image can attract or can offend people. Dress up in a way that can win people. So somebody asked me, why can't I just wear what I like? No. When you're on stage, you don't wear what you like. You wear what Jesus likes. I'm going to say that again. When you're on stage, you don't wear what you feel like. You wear what the Holy Spirit feels like. You wear what the Lord tells you. If you have a church where it's very hip, you've got jeans that are torn and the knees are out, that's cool. But when you're about to lead the people, dress up, cover your knees. Don't have a stomach out. Never have a stomach out. No matter how, how, how skinny your figure is. Even if you have a belly ring, don't show it. Even if it's a Friday youth service, don't show it. You know why? You want to win them to Jesus don't win them to you. Stop attracting people to you. Stop sharing the glory of your figure, of, your, of, of, uh, of the cleavage that, oh, I'm blessed uh, above and show it. Uh, it's your image, it, it's going to smear everyone. They'll say, which church? Oh, the one with the girls that are, okay. Okay. That's not the conversation we want. We don't want those conversations. Or oh, the church of yellow bones. Oh, but pastor, what should I do now? I've got a beautiful body. Cover it. 
ask the Holy Spirit, how can I present this body so that I can win them to Jesus? All right, so I hope you get it, right? At home, you can expose your stomach out and your belly ring. At whatever, where you're going privately, be, God bless you. You are blessed with your body. At church, on stage, you look like Christ. Or number four, shorts and tight pants. Gents, my gents, guys, we can't, that the pants cannot be too tight. We see everything out of your tight, skinny gym. I was guilty. I'm guilty. And I blame my wardrobe people sometimes when I do some of this recording. It put me on tight jeans. Pastor, this is the latest trend. You look, you look good. I'm not there to sell me. I'm there to sell Christ. Tight jeans, guys. We don't want it. The t-shirt of a 12-year-old. We are 35 and you are tight in yourself. We don't want that. As long as we see your thighs, ladies, you, are, you have missed it. You have missed it. You can't have revealing clothes. It is not necessary. Number five, your dress code can please or displease the Holy Spirit. Oh, pastor, where, where are you getting these things? Exodus 20 verse 25. If you make an altar of stones, like a stage, right? You should not build it on a cut stone, which means don't have too many steps going up. For if you use chisel on it, you will profane it, which means you will defame this, the, the altar. If it's too high, how many of you have seen those stages that are high? And then a lady is coming there with a summer dress and we see all your legs and everything even underneath it because we are down there, the stage is too high. See, the Lord is talking here, says, when you build the temple, my altar, continue, says, nor shall you go up to my altar on steps. With your high heels, but the thing is short. Your nakedness, you will be exposed. So at your church, if you've got a high stage, please mind your clothes, okay? Number F, dress up. To represent Jesus Christ and the church. Speak and live a life that glorifies Christ. Number eight. People receive a music team in three ways. Now when somebody told me this I didn't believe it. I used to like wear very very attractive jackets. And another pastor told me that you know. People they receive you in seven ways. In, in three ways. Number one. 70% people receive your image and your appearance. Before you speak. They say, ah, ah, of course, this one looks anointed. They just see the way you look. You come with your torn t-shirt, torn shirt, uh, looking like Balankia or whatever. You, they say, Jesus, cast the demon out of that young boy. Why is it dressed up like that? 70% is the image. When you go for an interview, 70% is, your, is, your, is your, how you appear. They say, ah, that one is a good candidate. 20% is, is the sound and the song. Sound and the song. Don't forget that. 10% is a content. You can sing scriptures if you dress up like you just came from the club. No matter how much scriptures you are singing, people will not be blessed. People look at you in and outside stage. Have a respectful name at home you are anointed at church but when you are at home they say wow that one is a christian at your work you cannot be a sinner at work and then at church you are holy number five your pastor is in charge of the music team so i've been having this issue i used to have a big problem with authority when they say wear pink i wear a baby pink when they say wear fawn i wear brown or gold I always just, I was just an odd one. When they say, wear shoes, I want to put boots. I always wanted to be different and unique. Your pastor is in charge. According to Jeremiah 3 verse 15, I will give you a pastor according to my heart. Which heart? The Lord's heart. Who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Your pastor is not your friend. Your pastor is your teacher. Your pastor is the one who's feeding you. You didn't choose your church by mistake. The Lord brought you to your church. Your church is connected to your success, your destiny. Everyone, I'm on number C, everyone at church is there to be saved. 
Now, what I mean to be saved, everyone is there to grow spiritually. At church, we've got what we call spiritual babies. These are people who just got born again. Maybe you're born again five years ago, but you're not growing, so you're still a baby. They are disciples. Okay? Disciples, these are people who are still like leaders, leader of a, a tea, an usher, leader of music team. They are still growing. And you've got teachers. Teachers, these are people who are matured. Paul says by now you ought to be a teacher. So a teacher is like a pastor. So there's very few. Maybe the, at the church there's like five teachers. The rest, give our night kids. Number five, do not, dis, do not be discouraged because of people who are still growing. If somebody's gossiping you, they are a baby. If somebody is proposing you non-stop, you say no, you, they are proposing you, they are a baby. Don't leave the church. If somebody is lying and accusing you for, for something you didn't do, they are a baby. Do not leave the church. In a music team, there's too many babies, I know. Too many babies. Oh, you gave me a song and on Sunday you decided to cut the song because there was an anointing there. You gave my song to that one. You are a baby. You are crying about the song. You are a baby. Oh, I bought a new dress. I was ready to sing and the pastor came up on stage and then he says, it's time to preach now. I'm leaving that. You are a baby. Babies complain about everything. The Lord gave you your pastor to love you and to care for you. The Lord has called and trained and ordained your pastor for you. Your pastor loves you and he has the heart of Christ. You receive your pastor by obedience. So your pastor is not looking for your money or anything. He just wants you to obey the word of God. Ephesians 6 verse 1. Obey your parents in the faith. It is the right thing to do. I'm on page number 5 on K. You reject your pastor by disobedience. When you gossip your pastor, it's, you are rejecting him. When you disrespect him, he says, can you please sing me this song? I, I saw another church once. The pastor got up and he started singing a song. A keyboardist just stopped playing. He just looked at the pastor. And I know it's because the, the worship team did not rehearse. The pastor stood up there. I will cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies and if I lay down I will cling to the old ragged cross and exchange it someday for a rock. The keyboard is stop playing. I, not because he didn't know how to play. It's a very basic song. Why are you singing ragged cross? Why are you singing Isafila, Tilongo? This is a You reject your pastor when you do that. So in the Bible, there's a guy called Gehazi. Now Gehazi was a servant of a prophet. And then in, in 2 Kings 5 verse 26, he went and took the money of Naman. Naman was a rich guy. He wanted to give to the prophet. The prophet says, no, I don't want your money. Go and dip yourself in a river and be healed from leprosy. Gehazi went and disobeyed his pastor. He said, please give me the money. I want the money. And the prophet says, Gehazi, was my heart not with you? When you disobeyed me. So your pastor's heart is with you. When you are gossiping him, he can feel it. Most pastors may not be prophetic to see everything, but they sense where they are not loved. When you laugh at them, maybe the pastor was trying to sing off key, and you laugh at them, they sense it. So you reject your pastor. Okay, number, number L, obey and believe your pastor, you shall prosper. Second Chronicles 2020. Now, I want us to go to uh, number six, be aware of the enemy of a music team. So who is the enemy of a music team? It's an ex-member. I know we say demons are the enemy. Listen, demons are enemy of all the churches. They just let the gate, you know, um, I will build my church upon this rock and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Satan is against every church. But who is the special enemy of your music worship team? You, you. Let me tell you, it's your ex-member. It's your ex-member. If you go to, let's just say in a relationship, you go to somebody's ex and say, can you say something positive about your ex? Is there anything good about your ex? If I would like to date your ex, you know, is it the right thing? They will never say anything good. Most of the exes, they are enemy. Not by choice, but they just, that's why they left. So your worship team ex-member will speak negative about you. Number B, your ex-member will poison the new people who want to join your team. 
They will poison them. You know, they will even ask, hey, do you still have that lady? No, that sopranist, that one. Hey, that one, eh? Is she still in a, in a team? They speak negative. Ex-members rejoice when you fail. They say, huh, this thing of joining master class, master class, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they rejoice. When you're doing a worship night, one of the tasks I'm going to give you today is to plan your first worship night for 2024. This, the, the lead vocalist was good and they left. Now we don't have a good lead vocalist. We've got somebody who's butchering the song. Somebody is even is, is calling members. How was the worship team today? Hey, somebody was singing. Hey, how did it go? There was no, it was dry. Ha, 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 ha. They laugh. These are the number one enemy. When you cannot be a friend with an ex-member of a music team, either they come back or just release them, cut them off. Don't share. And they like to go to Instagram and Facebook to see, is the church growing? Is the worship team going to dress up nice? Do you still have this? They even body shame us. Ex-members, cut them off. Leave them. Tell them, find another church. Be happy at your new church. Focus there. Leave us with our problems here. Number five, allow ex-members to go. Number six, offended members. Now, these are not ex, these are people who are here. As soon as you're offended, you become defi divisive. You divide, you divide the people. Okay? The pastor rebukes you once. Then you become angry for six months. That becomes an enemy. People who are busy, to, who miss rehearsal and skip church. Your music team, anyone who keeps skipping church with no reasons, they are the enemy of your worship team. I'm telling you, you know their names. They are enemies. If you know, if you didn't know you have enemies today, I've told you, they are in the music team. Number H, negative influencers. People who don't attend workshops. People who don't attend prayer. People who don't like Bible study. People who don't like home cell. People who don't like to carry the Bible. People who don't like to dress up the colors we agreed on. People who don't like to stick to the list of the songs we gave. They're always led by the Holy Spirit. They are negative and they become enemies. You must be careful of these people. Speak to them, pray for them, rebuke them. Do all the three. Number nine, people who are sinners. I know we are all weak, but a sinner is somebody who does it knowingly. You stay with a boyfriend, you are not married. You are the enemy of a music team. Okay? You are the enemy of the music team. Number ten, proud. Proud. People who cannot be taught. When we started, the day one, we were, we were 150 people. Where are the 150 people now? Excuses after excuses after excuses. These are people who don't want to be taught. They don't want to forgive. They are angry at the pastor with the last year message. Happy pastor preached about me last year. They are still angry today, but they are in a music team. These are the enemies. They don't want to repent. How do we bring a positive attitude in a music team? How do we bring a positive attitude? How many of you want to know? All right. Sec, uh, Philippians 2 verse 5. It says, have the same attitude. This is amplified, okay? Have the same attitude in yourself, which was on Christ. Look to him as your example in self-humility. Be like Jesus. Number one. Attitude is a garment of choice. You wear your attitude. You put it on. You can take it off if you want to. That's why people have bad attitude. But when they're with their friends, they're the most nicest person. In front of your manager, you are very respectful. At church, in front of a gog, when they tell him, Tanam, stop wearing that, that skirt, you become nasty. You wear a garment of choice. You choose. We say sing soprano, go high. You say, me, I'm not a soprano. It's your attitude. You say, me, I don't dance. I don't do praise song. I'm a worshiper. Me, I'm a worshiper. I don't dance. It's a garment you have chosen. You choose to be nice. Or you choose to be nasty. Some of the music team are the most unconsiderate people. The, the pastor says, please don't sing songs in Venek. I don't understand. Sing in English. You say, but no, I, I want, let's go back to the olden days gospel of long time ago. Attitude grows to control you. So if you have a bad attitude, it will control you. A keyboardist that doesn't want to, listen, you know some of the keyboardists, 
you keep playing an intro that we don't understand we practice the intro why are you are, are you doing a solo be, uh, while we are supposed to start we're singing you are alpha and omega and you are busy playing jazz your attitude will control you you won't able to play nice some of my musicians uh, people that i play with they are the most simplest and the most humblest guys why then your church keyboard is he is having so much attitude and he has not played anywhere it's the garment of choice it controls them it con they come late they don't do sound check they want to leave after worship not to listen to the preaching it's the garment of choice you wear it you wear it people take it off take off the garment of pride put on the garment of philippians 2 verse 5 put it on it's an attitude of christ you are talented me i used to be very proud i'll tell you guys i'll tell you i used to be so proud i used to have a bad attitude and the lord showed me that d if you have to if you if if, if i'm gonna use you you're gonna have to wear a different garment stop choosing this garment you are having jesus is moved by your heart not your voice jesus is moved by your heart not the strings or the pads you are playing on a keyboard. I must see. Attitude can change anytime. Tonight, may you repent. May you repent. As you are listening to me on this audio, may you repent. I love you. You can go far. The Bible says your gift will make room for you, but your humility and your character will keep you in a room. If you have a bad attitude, a wrong garment, you will never stay in a room of great people. Nobody wants a coming late musician. Nobody wants a soprano that can't greet. Nobody wants an alto that is nasty. You have to change a comment. Number four, attitude defines your character. People don't know your heart. They see your character. They see your attitude. Number five, attitude promotes or demotes there's a guy, I, I never played with him. I won't tell you his name. Back in the days, he was famous for coming late. He was famous for switching off the phone when it's time for the gig. I never called him. He never made it. You don't know him. His life got finished. He was one of the most talented person. Your character will demote you. It starts at the rehearsal. If a rehearsal is at three, keep coming at five past. That thing will demote you. That thing will demote you. Why can't you come for sound check? Hi, but it's church. No, but there's human beings. You know, people come to church, they want the best. And we are offering less. Every Sunday, you're offering less. When you are paid, you rehearse all night. When you are paid, you rehearse all night. Okay, let's, let's move on. Number F, attitude has no gender. It's not a lady thing. It's not a man thing. It has no gender. Attitude has no race. You can't say, I'm a Zulu, I'm a Kosa, I'm like this. No. If your attitude doesn't smell good, it doesn't matter if you are a Nguni, you are a Tsonga. It doesn't matter where you come from. Attitude has no race. It has no status. It doesn't matter if you are driving or you are Ubering or you came with a train. Attitude has no past. You can't say, this is how how I, I was raised no attitude has no future it's now attitude is now it's what you choose to wear now today on this call i'm giving this lesson for free you know what does it mean it took 14 years to put this stuff together but somebody's attitude will not even listen to the audio there's like four three audios this is the fourth one why because it means nothing it means nothing but that attitude well, you will come out of great rooms where God will open. You will, you will work with great people and they'll wonder, why are you having an attitude like this? Because you never listen. Positive attitude is a choice. I want to give a last note now with your page number six. Money. If you buy a praise and worship book, a ministry book, on page 100, I talk more about this. We need music at church. It's people who need music. God is not looking for strings or a bass guitar or a drums. God doesn't need any of those things to move. Prophets need them. Pastors need them. People need them. Human beings need music, but God doesn't need music. Church is a home. It's where you serve. 
I am a Pungani. There's a, call, there's a place called Wapungani. When I go there, I sing for free. I teach. If my dad calls me to come and teach in his church, I teach and I don't expect anything. Why? It's home. Where is your home? Give willingly and cheerfully at your home. Well, charge. If you are visiting IM Church and we are calling you, then charge us. If you are visiting another church, but at your home, do it for free. Please. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7. Church can employ people if the church has money. We cannot be employing people without a church property. We cannot be employing people with bad drums that are, have wires on them. And somebody's crying for 500 rand. Home. Unless it's not your home, then it's okay. But if it's your home, don't, don't ask for money. If they were giving you, tell the pastor, thank you. The master class told me that I must say it's home. They bury you, they marry you, they bless you, they intercede for you. It's home. Don't take a cent. There's no need. I served for 14 years in three churches. Tower of Grace, Lighthouse, Life in the Spirit. For 14 years, net even one salary. 14 years, no one salary. Has the Lord not blessed me? He has blessed me. Okay? So please do it. I'm, I'm celebrating 20 years in marriage in a few weeks. It's part of the blessing. I stay in my own house that I own. It's part of the blessing. I'm driving the car that somebody blessed me with, gave me, not because I'm a singer, but because I'm faithful. It's the blessing. It's the blessing. Where would I be if I was collecting 500 rand per service? Where would I be? I've got three kids because of the blessing. They are not drinking or crazy. It's the blessing. But it's 14 years later, Bazalwane. Now I start. Start. Start tonight. Tell your pastor, thank you. This thing of, of Ubering us at church. Uber yourself at church, man. Come on. When you're going for a gig, who Ubers you? Number nine, rule breakers. Write an agreement for all members. So which means a music team must sign a working agreement. Of coming late, what are the consequences? Put the rules and make it clear. Everyone must submit to the rules that are indicated, including a leader. The team must know what's going to happen if they break the rules. Keep the agreements, the terms and conditions. So don't, don't be too harsh. Listen to um, day two of the masterclass. First, you give a warning if a person keeps coming late. Number two, if the thing continue, you meet one-on-one. -on -one. Number three, if the thing continue, you must give them a, a written disciplinary uh, uh, letter. Number four, suspend a person for four weeks, one month, and, but let them come to your rehearsal. And then at the end, uh, let them reinstate them. Let them come back. Don't chase people out. We want them back. Why people join a team? They just want to fellowship with others. They want an encounter. They want to serve the Lord. And they want to have a family and friends. They want to minister with their gifts. What is the goal of the music team? It's the presence of God. The presence of God. That is your goal. A soccer team, their main agenda is to win the game. The worship team, the main agenda is the presence of God. I spoke about clothes, the presence of God. I spoke about your pastor, respect your pastor, it's the presence of God. In 2 Chronicles 5.13, it talks about that. That there was a glory of God at church. So why do we come to rehearsal? Psalms 33 verse 3. It says sing unto the Lord a new song. How are we going to sing a new song if we don't rehearse? Play skillfully with a loud noise. Skillful. Rehearsal is to improve our skill. People, they listen to our voices. Alright? The Lord is the one who listens to our hearts. People listen to your hands as you play as a keyboardist. But the Lord who produces the glory, he listens to your heart, dear musician. You need your heart to be pure, but you need your voice to have skill. Match the two things on Sunday. Bring your skill and bring your pure heart. You're going to experience Second Chronicles 5 verse 14. The glory will fill the room. And the preacher will not be able to preach. Wow. Every time when I minister, sometimes the first few notes, I sing to God. I don't sing to people. I close my eyes. 
I sing to Jesus. That's what I do. That's why I don't like to be disturbed before the service. I like to pray, pray, just connect. I'll give you more, more than this, not just a little. I'll give you everything. You come to rehearsal to practice the presence of God. You come to rehearsal to practice to give skillfully. The rehearsal is for Psalms 33 verse 3. Anyone who didn't come to rehearsal last week, they missing Psalms 33 verse 3. Anyone who's too busy this week, they are missing Psalms 33 verse 3. If you're planning not to rehearse, you are the enemy of this music team because you don't like Psalms 33 verse 3. What do we do on stage? Check the microphone before you sing. Don't hit the microphone. Don't want to want to the microphone. Say hallelujah. Say father you are worthy. Say how amazing God you are. When you do sound check, do it one at a time. First microphone second microphone do sound check a night before not during prayer time not during intercession time prepare written songs don't go on stage without your songs have the keys know who sings what know what you are dressing up do it for the whole month of may and june put your song list aside all right number d hold the microphone correctly don't put three vocals in one microphone because you're not going to be audible by your own microphone hold the microphone correctly i'm on number e connect worship songs i've taught you this thing okay connect worship songs which means if you're singing how great thou art how great thou art oh Holy. it's like one song right don't change the keys connect worship songs number f enjoy the holy spirit the holy spirit stops moving because people you are rushing to go let the holy spirit saturate you let him anoint you let him feel you lie down roll down if your church is always doing the two hour service ask your pastor can we have one service where we just come and worship and we don't go until the Holy Spirit is done. If you don't enjoy the Holy Spirit, he's not going to join your worship. He's not. He's not. Entertain him until he has enough and he will always visit you. Number G, allow people to sing along. Number H, play simple songs. Number L, number I, lead people into the presence of God. Your aim must be healing, deliverance, prophetic, power, signs and wonders. And it cannot happen on stage. It happens at the rehearsal. And it happens at your class, a closet at home. Start at home. Start at home. And at the rehearsal, to every leader here, please let the rehearsal be full of fire. As we close. So the, our assignment for the month of June is to plan your worship night. I'm not saying do a worship night in June. Please plan in three months in three months so you can plan for uh october september september october november december start planning for those months but start today we're gonna practice everything i taught you go and listen to day one to day four we are coming to practice the presence of god the last master class on the 7th of june it's the last one may god bless you please listen to day one day two day three and so that you can enjoy day four. God bless you. Good night.